Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Super Men's Comics. And of course, we got that new week. So we are bringing you the comic book market trends. That's right. Three up, three down. We're giving you three hot, three cold market trends in the comic community. Crazy week to start off. Huge storm. Maryland, where I'm living, it's pretty much an island. Everything's flooded. But let's not bring everyone down. Let's bring everyone up with what's hot this week. Jack, before we get into it, how's your week going so far? Oh, well, so far, it's hot down here in South Carolina, so we're not quite getting the uh, precipitation you're getting, but we're getting all of the humidity. Yeah, yeah it was nice to get a relief, and then the humidity came right back in. <laughs> but three up, the first one we're going to talk about this week is Green Hornet. There's a lot of news going around about Green Hornet. We've talked about Green Hornet a little bit on this channel within the past few weeks, but tell us a little bit more, Jack. Yeah, it's funny, um, Brian, you and I were having a conversation a, a couple of weeks back, and I said to you, I just funny feeling Green Hornet's going to get popular again. Um, now, I wasn't thinking that the news that we got recently was the direction that we were going to get, but so now we're getting news that Kevin Smith has partnered with the company that owns Peanuts, and they're going to start producing an animated series based on Kevin's Dynamite Comics um, Green Hornet run. Now, this run was unique because it kind of aged up the, the, the story. So we ended up having uh, the daughter of Kato uh, as Kato and the son of Green Hornet as Green Hornet. It was originally his script for his Green Hornet movie that he was supposed to make that ended up getting canned. And later, Seth Rogen would take the helm of that movie franchise. But when I mentioned it to you, Brian, what we were talking about was the talk that Seth Rogen is going to come with another Green Hornet movie, and this time he's not going to star in it, and it's going to have a more gritty tone. And we said, well, we think that that could be something based on his success with the boys um, that works. But this is totally different. This has Green Hornet number one, Green Hornet number two, and Green Hornet number four spike. And they say, well, why all of those issues? Well, you have a complicated first appearance situation. Both characters appear on the cover of number one in costume, but do not appear in the interior of the story. Number two, you have characters appear for the first time. And then number four, you have characters appear in costume for the first time. I don't play comics politics. I would say be on the lookout for all of those um, issues now. They've been in dollar bins. You can definitely check those back issue bins. For number one, there's a very popular J. Scott Campbell as well as an Alex Ross cover. So there's some great cover artists involved on this, this run. This series is really fun. If you've never read it, Kevin Smith is a pretty decent comic book writer. And I think that this animated series could be one that gets picked up by a streaming service and be a big deal. So pay attention to this one. Um, I think this is not the last we're going to hear about Green Hornet in the coming years. So moving into the next one of the three up, we're going to talk about this is kind of, I won't say touchy subject, but I've been seeing, no doubt this is one of the hot trends because we're hearing people talk pros of it and we're talking about people that hate it as well. And we are talking about some of those late print keys. Yeah, now this is something that we predicted a while ago. It was a major theme in the first volume of our first ebook um, that compiled all of those great top 10 back issue shows that we do weekly here on the channel. Um, but what we talked about was the fact that there are certain modern first appearances that have priced out of a lot of people's budgets. And the second and third and fourth prints really hadn't moved beyond cover price. Now, this was a trend that was pretty common. You could have seen it with Cosmic Ghost Rider. You could have seen it with Miles Morales. You could have seen it with um, Spider-Gwen. And we didn't feel like this would continue for long. And guess what? It hasn't. Now, all of those books are red hot. Uh, the late printings of Spider Gwen in particular. Uh, second print, a recent sale was 135. The third print is regularly selling for 80. The fourth print is and fifth print are selling for like 50. Now, if you look at long term investment potential, I, I got to tell you, Brian, it's kind of crazy, but these late prints, they have as much of an investment possibility as the first print. So if you miss that first print, right? Let's say you miss a first print on a Wednesday. Let's say this weekend you miss that Robin or this week you miss that Robin King, you know, and you're like, well, what do I do? Do I pay this crazy inflated price? Well, if it's like 50 bucks, I would say no, because if you can get that second print for five time tell what has shown you that that 10 times multiplier does not continue as time goes on. Matter of fact, the second print gains steam. You look at a book like, um, say, Spider-Gwen, which is currently selling for about 33% of what the first print sells for. Uh, so if you bought that 
at 10% and now you're sitting at 33%, you've made quite a bit of profit over what you would have made percentage wise buying the same amount uh, of money into the first print. Now I'm not advocating the second prints over the first print. I'm just simply saying that if you miss out on the first print, do not sleep on these second prints, third prints, fourth prints. Null is another character that's seeing explosion with those late printings. We've certainly seen it with Miss Marvel. Um, we've seen it with Captain Marvel. We're going to continue to see it. So it's something to pay attention to. And another book that comes to mind immediately is Strange Academy because they're releasing a lot of late printing for that Strange Academy number one. And I think while a lot of people may have missed the boat on the first print, check out those late printings for a cover price at your LCS. Yeah, I think that's a, a valid point, but I think that point you met you mentioned something i think is key there those late printings to, in my mind they're only worth picking up not because of like oh there's a lesser print run it's only if the yep. first print is out of people's range and the other prints start driving up the market as yep. well if you can get that first print for a relatively good price i don't see the later printings doing as much even if they're lesser printed why would you get it if that first print's still obtainable but if that first print is going out of people's range, those other printings, I agree with that point where they're going to start following because that's what people are going to naturally go to to get those copies. Right. And there's nothing wrong with buying ahead of that curve, but you have to really believe that character is going to ascend to that level, that you have to believe that this is a major key, which most first appearances aren't. All right. And speaking of characters like that, the last one for the three-up portion this week. This is a character that we've talked about before on Hot. It comes up, comes down, but there's been some more news. And we are talking about Kate Bishop. This is a character that not only is coming, but is coming with a major actor attached that people love. And that kind of gives credence to anybody who's been investing in these Kate Bishop keys. We've seen now this Hawkeye um, and Kate Bishop run really spike that that. Matt Fraction run, all of those random issues um, have spiked. We've seen the Young Avengers first appearance spike. We've seen all kinds of Kate Bishop keys and variants start to spike. And I think this is going to continue. And to be honest with you, she has a lot more potential long term than really Hawkeye did as far as comics because the first appearances are more attainable. You're talking about modern comics. There's a lot they can do with the female angle, um, especially with Scarlett Johansson leaving the MCU. There's kind of a hole there. So this, is a, this has been a good buy for years. Shout out to those savvy investors who grabbed up this character years ago. And now is the time when it's going to start paying off. So we've just given you the three up portion. Now we're going to switch gears and go over to what's cold right now in the comic community, starting with X-Men minor character keys so now this hasn't affected a lot of the mega keys that everyone's anticipating but in a lot of the minor keys where people were starting to speculate um you were starting to see x-men speculation run rampant all over the internet um a lot of dollar bin books back issues uh first appearances that are very minor were being grabbed up and rightfully so right i think there's a ton of money in the x-men universe coming to the mcu but it's just early I mean, the reality is we're not going to see any concrete announcements for a few years. So certain books started spiking as people talked about them online and things like that. But now you're starting to see kind of the come down of a lot of that, which for a while as a buyer, I was starting to feel like a lot of X-Men keys were really starting to get kind of priced out online. And I say keys loosely, I'll just say first appearances. And um, you were starting to get kind of priced out of logically what I would want to spend for some of these kind of low end first appearances. When I say low end, I mean the type of character that the average comic person hasn't heard of, um, but very well may end up in a X-Men film. Or in the same kind of applies for F Fantastic Four, but you're seeing it much more prominent with the X-Men franchise. So now that the, the prices have come back down, if there was a character maybe a couple months ago that you were checking and you were like, ah, you know what? I missed that book for a dollar or three dollars. Now it's 15. Go back and check now because I bet it's closer to four or five now and it may be back in your kind of targeted buying range. So this is nothing but the spec cycle. My man, Brian Wood has broke that down more times than I could count, but this happens. You know, once we, once we knew X-Men was coming, mutants are coming. Uh, Kevin Feige said on D3 last year, ever since then, there's been a run on mutant books. Um, and we're just now starting to get the cooling down period, uh, which doesn't mean they're bad investments. It means they're great buys. But, the next one we're talking about on the three down, this is almost like a three down, like a, like a downtrend spiral because we've talked about this recently on the three down portion, but we're still going to talk about, we're talking about Batwoman. 
yeah, this is just really tough. Um, this was to be expected, right, with the recasting of the character. Um, even though Batwoman has still played kind of a prominent role within the, the current publishing run and even in the Joker War, but at the same point, um, there's just no traction on that, those Katie Kane first appearances. So, you know, the, the, it's just dwindling more and more. The television show really has hurt public perce perception. Um, not so much the fact that the show wasn't, say, as successful as other CW shows, just the fact that it, it, it ran its course after one year. Because a lot of shows kind of limp out to a, a, a slow start and then kind of find their footing. Uh, but Ruby Rose leaving that show prematurely, I think it's, it's really done damage. That I don't know that you can kind of rebound in the short term. Now, the big change would be if we ever get a Batman film, which I pray we do at some point, that really highlights the Bat family and where you've got Batgirl and Batwoman and Spoiler and Robin and Damien and all of these great characters, then she has that second chance. But that's why maybe now is the opportunity where you'll start to see, especially as conventions start to open back up, there's a good chance you can start to find dealers who were hoping to maybe cash this book out at $25 more willing to take $5 for it. But the last one we're going to talk about in the three down portion, which I think also presents some buying opportunity is we're talking about last Ronin spec. Yeah. So there's, there's buying opportunity, but there's money losing opportunity out there too. Um, so everybody is looking for, that last Ronin spec. Every source that I know, yep. and I'm not gonna, Who's it gonna be? yeah, has like this book that they're pointing to. Um, so the big thing right now, because of course the, they have one of the biggest platforms, is Key Collector talking about the 104 110 variant. Now that's not their original spec. They and they did credit the person who did point that book out, but on that cover you see Raphael with one of every weapon, and there's some sort of apocalyptic thing. I highly doubt though that that's how they would be premiering anything last ronin with like a variant cover um on a tmnt mainstay issue like that um that's certainly not any sort of indication that we've gotten there's other back issues like the michelangelo christmas special um that have gotten attention and any of these issues uh as could possibly be there's an archie issue as well that's gotten a lot of attention any of these issues could be the one right and, and all of them kind of need something to happen for that one to make sense as what is ultimately the one um but most likely we're not going to know any of this until last Ronin actually comes out and there's a good chance none of these issues will play into the story of last run now what we do know about last Ronin is that it was a story that kind of like the idea was concocted years and years and years ago um I think that idea probably stayed close to the vest with Eastman and Laird. So I like some of the older books more than I would say like the current IDW incentive, which I think would be just more kind of coincidental and cool. Um, but, and there's a lot of people that are buying 105 for the cover for the same reason. But I think a lot of those people aren't reading the current story. So they don't, they don't know how that cover and those covers tie in to where the current story is. Um, but there's a lot of reasons to buy 105. It's a great issue, but all of this, somebody's going to be right or nobody's going to be right. Um, a lot of people are going to be wrong. Speculation is fun. If you're having fun with this, awesome. Then really there's no reason to be down on any of it. But if you're throwing a whole bunch of money into a certain book because an app or your favorite person on Instagram or your favorite YouTuber likes a certain book that's a bad reason to and you can end up losing money um so this is tough this is a crap shoot we're never going to know till that story comes out but also brian that's also why this last run in the story is so hot because people care so much about what is going to happen in this story and and we're seeing it spill out all over the place and i'm just glad we're talking about turtles even if we have to talk about it on this side of the list i'm just glad we got eastman and laird back together oh man yeah but there it is, guys. There's three up, three down for this week. Let us know. What do you guys think is hot? What do you think is cold right now? Because that's part of this show, right? We're talking about the comic community. You guys make up that comic community, so we try to pick what people are talking about. What is hot and then what is cold? Three up, three down. This is Brian Jack from Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.
Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told her.